Hello, 7th graders! This is TV High welcoming you to Teleradio Escuela. Tara na! The School in the Air program of Tagum City National High School. We are glad to be with you in this new normal journey of schooling through radio broadcast. I am your radio host, Rose Ann Eluren from Tagum City National High School. How are you feeling now, there students? I hope you are well and safe wherever you are. Today, you will be learning about hazard identification, risk assessment, and control measures. This topic will be brought to us by our teacher broadcaster, Ma'am Nenalyn M. Omiktin. Hello there, students. I hope you are all safe and well, wherever you are while listening to our program. Now that you are all settled in your area, bring out your pens and notebooks and your learning materials, specifically your TLE 7, Quarter 2, Module 6. Here are our learning objectives for today. At the end of this lesson, you are expected to determine the effects of hazards, define hazard and risk in the workplace, and control workplace hazards. Before we begin with our discussion, let me ask you these questions. Just recently, we experienced earthquake. Is earthquake a hazard or disaster? How should we prepare for earthquakes? Do you know some ways to ensure disaster preparedness during earthquakes? Answer to these questions will be unveiled as we elaborate our today's topic. This time, to further understand our topic, let us define what is hazard and what is disaster and risk assessment. A hazard is a condition that possesses an amount of threat to life, health, property, or environment. There are many hazards with working in an office environment, including incorrect workstation setup, poor lighting, Poor layout furniture and equipment, poor housekeeping, poor electrical hazards and equipment hazards. While disaster refers to adverse happenings often occurring suddenly and unexpectedly. A disaster may be caused by carelessness, negligence, bad judgment or the like, or by natural forces as a hurricane or flood. Added, a risk assessment is a systematic method of looking at work activities. Added, a risk assessment is a systematic method of looking at work activities, considering what could go wrong and deciding on suitable control measures. These control measures are designed to eliminate, reduce, or minimize the risk of loss, damage, or injury in the workplace. Now, after having differentiated some of the keywords in our lesson today, let us proceed to our main discussion. There is a common saying that says, a safe workplace is an efficient workplace. Keeping workers safe will improve employee morale and when employees are happy in their job, the more productive they will be. A hazardous workplace can cause unnecessary stress to workers affecting their morale and ultimately production. Employees operate much more efficiently when they know they can complete their job or task without their health being compromised. The workplace can take a variety of settings, such as outdoors among nature, inside an office, or remotely while traveling. Regardless of the setting, the most productive workplaces possess an efficient and positive environment where employees have the tools they need. Therefore, it is very important to keep the workplace safe from hazardous materials because effect of hazardous materials can be fatal. What are the effects of hazards in a workplace? Biological hazards. 
which include viruses, bacteria, insects, animals, and other can cause adverse effects on our health. For example, molds, blood, and other bodily fluids, harmful plants, seaweeds, dust, and vermin can cause sickness to the human body. The most usual zones of spreading diseases are in public places and at workplace. So, workplace health is seriously threatened by biological hazards. Biological hazard is difficult to manage because of their capability to transmit from one object to another, like the novel coronavirus 2019 or SARS-CoV-19. Mechanical hazards are hazards created by the use of or exposure to either powered or manually operated equipment, machinery, and plant. It can cause serious injury which depends on how the accident happens like falls, traps, falls, and slips. Therefore, the establishment or the management is accountable to make sure all these risks are reduced. Chemical hazards are hazardous substances that can cause harm. These hazards can result in both health and physical impacts such as skin irritation, respiratory system irritation, blindness, corrosion, and explosions. Chemical and mixtures of chemicals are found around us. It is good to remember that these are acidic chemicals which are harmful to our health. Some chemicals are extremely explosive which makes workplace health and safety at risk. The risk involved in any place where chemicals are present is difficult to regulate without recognizing first what exactly the chemical is and its effects and purposes. Fire hazards are any material substances or action that increases the likelihood of an accidental fire to occur. To avoid the risk brought by fire hazard, it is a legal requirement for all businesses to carry out a fire risk evaluation. This helps avoid fires and secure quick evacuation of the locations by employees and the public in the occurrence of a fire. Ergonomic hazards are a result of physical factors that can result in musculoskeletal injuries. For example, a poor workstation set up in an office poor posture and manual handling. Common muscle strains mostly result from performing similar motion over and over again. These repetitive stress injuries are some of the common workstation injuries. We have been discussing the effects of hazards, but what is hazard when we refer to hazards in relation to occupational safety and health. The most commonly used definition of hazard in relation to occupational safety and health is that hazard is any potential source of harm or adverse health effect on a person or persons. Most of the time, the terms hazard and risk are often used interchangeably. But this simple example explains the difference between the two. If there was a spill of water in a room, then that water would present a sleeping hazard to persons passing through it. If access to that area was prevented by a physical barrier, then the hazard would remain, but the risk would be minimized. So, what is risk? The definition of risk is the likelihood that a person may be harmed or suffers adverse health effects if exposed to a hazard. This definition of the word risk 
is in relation to occupational safety and health. We can categorize risk. This is according to number one, the potential harm or adverse health effect that the hazard may cause. Number two, the number of times persons are exposed. And number three, the number of persons exposed. For example, exposure to airborne asbestos fibers will always be classified as high because a single exposure may cause potentially fatal lung disease. Whereas the risk associated with using a display screen for a short period could be considered to be very low as the potential harm or adverse health effects are minimal. Managing health and safety hazards is the key to operational excellence in the workplace, regardless of its size. Where possible, you should always try to remove or eliminate hazards from the workplace. For example, by using a different process or changing the way a job is done. If it is not possible to eliminate the hazard, here are steps to determine the most effective measures to control workplace hazards and to minimize risk. Number one, eliminate hazard. Redesign or reorganize the workplace to eliminate the hazard. This is the most effective method of controlling and removing hazard completely. Note that it is cheaper and more practical to eliminate hazards at the design or planning stage of a product, process, or place used for work. Let us have an example of this. Will you be able to eliminate the hazard? For instance, if crack equipment is causing the hazard, what will you do? Yes, you take away the hazard completely by repairing or replacing the equipment. Number two, substitute hazard. Substitute the hazard with something safer. This is one of the measures of replacing one hazardous agent or work process with a little dangerous one. Let us take this as an example. Can you substitute a dangerous supplies or equipment with safer one? If you are using a cleaning chemical that gives off toxic fumes, what will you do? Yes, you should substitute the chemical. Replace this with a non-toxic alternative. Number three, engineering control. It is important to have a control in the engineering part of the machinery or workplace to control and avoid hazard. Changing a part of machinery or a work procedure to lessen contact to a hazard. For example, an elevator operation or other moving or electrical equipment and devices can be checked regularly to prevent hazard. Number four, administrative control. The administration or the management is one of the keys to control hazard. The administration can change work procedures that will eliminate hazards. This is through writing safety policies, signages, and the like that should be followed by all the workers in the workplace. Number five, personal protective equipment. Personal protective equipment refers to a device or a protective clothing worn by workers to protect them from hazards in the workplace. The use of PPE is only needed if ever the first four steps are unsuccessful or are not applicable. This is the last line of protection and not the first. That was a very intense discussion, isn't it? Were we able to attain our objectives? Let's see. Were we able to determine the effects of hazards? Yes, we did. 
Were we able to define hazard and risk in the workplace? Yes, we did. And were we able to discuss on how to control workplace hazards? Yes, we did. Now that we are done with our discussion about hazard and risk evaluation, let us see if you can remember and apply what you have learned so far. If you want to listen attentively as I read to you the questions, and please answer them comprehensively. Shall we begin? Alright. Number one question. What is the word that means the likelihood that a person may be harmed or suffer adverse health effects if exposed to a hazard? Did you answer risk? If you answer the word risk, then you are correct. Number two, what is a condition that possess an amount of threat to life, health, property, or environment? Did you answer hazard? Yes. Hazard is a condition that possess an amount of threat to life, health, property, or environment. Good job! Now for our last question, in controlling workplace hazard, what is the last line of protection? Did you answer personal protective equipment? Then you are correct. PPE is the last line of protection and not the first one. Well done! We have completed one lesson in grade 7 today and I know you are now ready to answer your activities in your modules. Thank you and don't forget our hashtag, TLE Life Skills. Have a good day students! See you next time! Thank you teacher Nanalyn. For you to understand our topic further, you may do the exercises provided in your modules. You may also have an advanced study of your topics to prepare yourself for your next lesson. Stay tuned for our next lesson here at TV High, the School in the Air program of Tagum City National High School. I am Rose Ann L. Uren, your radio host. Makisabay, matuto, at maglakbay dito sa TV High. Keep safe everyone. Have a great day ahead. Goodbye! Hi!